afternoon. Thanks for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. For the second time in three years, a small dairy farm in Franklin, Vermont, is being recognized for producing the highest quality milk in the state. The recent Vermont Dairy Producers Association Conference in South Burlington provided opportunities for Vermont farmers to connect with national experts on complex issues like animal health and changing climate. The conference also served to honor three Vermont farms for the quality of their milk. In a state renowned for its high quality dairies, the top three were recognized and received a financial incentive from the Pizzagalli Fa Family Farm Fund. The runners up were the Du Bois Farm in Addison and the Essex Farm in Virgins. The first place winner was Halmar's Farm and here's John Gates. It's something we don't expect. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice honor to receive. Um, we're surprised that we've done that well. And it's nice to know that the things we do every day on the farm just produce a good quality product and to make a uh, good living for us uh, translates into something like this. So tell us a little bit about your farm, the family who works there, the types of cows, the operation you run. Okay, we have a small family farm in, it's located in Franklin, Vermont. Uh, we farm a little over 200 acres. Uh, we have a Jersey herd of about 45 cows, 90 total animals. Um, the farm is operated by myself, my wife, my son Noah is working full time on the farm. We have two other sons, Ben, who is a police officer, but he's close by and helps out on the farm when he can. And our middle son, Justin, is in uh, Hudson, New York. He's a musician, a music writer and composer, and, it, and he's home. And when he comes home, he's at the barn the next Good morning door. to help things, in, help things out. And, um, the farm has been in the family for over 80 years, uh, started by, by, by my grandparents. My parents started operating the farm in the late 60s, and Karen and I, and I have been there since uh, the early 80s. And the biggest change for us was when we transitioned to organic production back in 1997. So over 25 years, we've been shipping organic milk, most of that to Crop Cooperative Organic Valley. Well, speaking of organic, viewers have seen organic dairying in the news for different reasons. A lot of the economic news hasn't been that great. How are things in the organic sector? Well, I think we're very fortunate. Again, we belong to Crop Cooperative, a farmer-owned cooperative. And through all of this turmoil the last couple of years, I think they've managed it very, very well. Um, our income is, is quite steady. Um, you know, we have a base price that's set for us and we weren't earn uh, extra on top of that because of our milk quality and also because of our components, our butter, fat and protein because we milk Jersey cows. And like ev every dairy producer, you know, we've had some, had some, uh, not struggles, some challenges this past summer, the expenses were much higher. Expenses for producing feed, for diesel. Um, and so that has cut our bottom line, but we're still, we're still doing fairly well. And I think our cooperative has a plan in place for going forward, uh, but it's, it's a challenging time for, for organic dairy and for conventional dairy as well. You've been clear uh, that this award means a lot to you and your family. What does it mean to the dairy consuming public? Well, mostly we, we strive to make a high quality product, so we're going to have a safe product in the end for the consumer. And, um, and also our cooperative is one who we, we sell them the raw product, but they also produce the finished products that end up in the grocery stores. So a better quality ingredient to start with is going to end up with a higher quality product in the end with a longer shelf life and just being a better quality product for the consumer. Is there something else that you want to share with our viewing public? We feel honored to get this award to know that uh, we still have an association like this and that supporting the dairy industry because our numbers are dwindling every year. We're losing farms and any support we have along the way that keeps us incentivized to, to keep working, to keep doing the things we do every day. And it, that becomes more and more challenging. Now we're bringing in another generation is coming in and we're talking about what does that mean and how is it all gonna play out? And uh, we really don't know. We, we're, we're looking at different things to do on the farm, expand other, other income sources possibly, but um, when you, you get an award like this and it just encourages you to keep, keep going, you come to a, a meeting like this and see all the producers here. And this is, a, this is a big dairy conference. There's going to be another one in about a month, primarily for organic producers. But um, I've, I've learned early on that um, 
support my neighbors who are farming no matter how you're doing it. If you're doing a good job, if you're, you have a commitment to the land, a commitment to your animals, and you're doing a good job, whether you're organic or conventional, whether you're milking cows or goats or sheep, it doesn't matter if you're doing a good job in, in, in just keeping the landscape in agriculture. I think that's important, and, I, and something like this helps support that in, in my mind. Each year, the Pizzagalli Family Farm Fund provides $5,000 grants to support the Milk Quality Award Program. The grants are designed to encourage professionalism and quality in the industry and recognize farmers for the hard work they do each day and provide dairy products to Vermont and the region. One outstanding dairy farm in Vermont will be recognized this summer for its overall excellence in dairying, including its quality milk production, management practices, and commitment to land stewardship. It is the annual Dairy Farm of the Year Award, and nominations are now being accepted. To submit a nomination or learn about the award, check the website go.uvm.edu slash vdfya. If you need to request a nomination form by mail, you can also call 1-800-639-2130. Here's Keith Silva now with a look back at last year's winner. Molly Brook Farm stands on Cow Hill Road in Cabot. And when the cows are coming in for milking, it's easy to see how the road got its name. The constant has always been family and the cows. Miles Goodrich is the seventh generation of his family to farm here. Come on, let's go. You feel like a commitment to keep what they started going and try to improve on it. Uh, it seems like every generation does some big thing to keep the farm going. Miles' father often joked that nobody ever made enough money to leave, but in truth, I don't know that anybody would want to leave. Jersey cows have been roaming these hills since 1835 when this farm was established. To put that into historical context, the United States only went as far as Missouri back then. How about this for history? Some of these cows here at Molly Brook Farm can be traced back to a herd of registered jerseys that Miles' grandparents bought in 1917. I don't want to say jerseys are better than Holsteins than this breed or that breed because the truth is in Vermont we need all dairy farms, all types of cows, we all are important in this state. But our particular love, of course, is Jersey's. They're always watching for an opportunity to uh, cause trouble. Not always, but they pay attention. We used to have one that would pull a bolt out that, was, that would keep the gate down. She'd pull it out with her teeth and then open the gate and go through. And we'd yell at her and she'd run through like, oh my God, they're after me. <laughs> we have to be on our toes all the time. At 565 acres, Mollybrook Farm is well suited to grazing. Organic dairy farmers are required to put their cows on pasture throughout the growing season instead of feeding them crops like corn that require tractors and harvesters. We have two acres of open land for every animal that we have on this farm. So we're not having a big impact of manure and phosphorus on our fields. We graze over 100 acres, which means we're not driving a tractor with diesel fuel over each acre at least four times a cutting. And if you have four cuttings, you know, that's, that's 16 trips over each acre. Now, on over 100 acres here, the cows are getting their own feed, fertilizing it themselves. I mean, that's huge to, to I think, to the climate. Anson, this is your hometown, Cabot, Vermont. Here it is, good old Cabot. I live uh, on the other side of the hill. Someone who knows a thing or two about dairy farming in Vermont is Anson Tebbets. He's the secretary of Vermont's Agency of Agriculture and a lifelong Cabot resident. This is a place that, you know, when I was growing up, we visit quite often. Our families. Farms are always evolving. They're always changing, changing their practices. There's new technology. There's old practices that may become popular again as well, the, go the full circle. So this is a, a case where, you know, all farmers uh, are just constantly having to adapt uh, to changes. Farmers are also having to adapt to a public maybe not knowing what they do. Uh, as we have fewer farms, fewer people closer to the earth and animals, 
uh, there's an educational component. So I think our farmers are always adapting and changing and having to explain, hey, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing to my field. This is how I'm growing my crops. This is how I'm milking my cows. This is how I'm feeding my cows. And this is the product I'm making. Miles and Rhonda have been rewarded for their hard work. But as they look to the future, they know there's still one more job to be done in order to secure the farm's future. My husband and I are both in our 60s now. And, you know, we're not sure who's going to, who's going to take over. We're not sure, you know, who, who, we're not sure who even has the, the, the love and passion, you know, to continue. We have grandchildren that are very interested, but the oldest one's 12. So I, we don't want to push them into it, uh, but they are very interested. They love being down here helping out, they're good with the cows, they're <laughs> good workers. Usually fades around 12 or 13 and, and then comes back later on. But The future may be uncertain, but Rhonda says their newfound honor as the Vermont Dairy Farm of the Year There you go. I feel silly. <laughs> gives them a sense of purpose and hope. It's, it's just a little bit overwhelming, but it's really a great honor. And I have to tell you, and I hope every farm becomes Dairy Farm of the Year because it's, it's hard some days and it's really nice to take a moment and just you be appreciated and just reflect and go, you know, we've really worked hard and we've come a long way and the things we're doing make a difference. You know, I, th I think that's probably the biggest for me personally, just that chance to, to say we're doing a good job. Mollybrook Farm has stood on Cow Hill Road for nearly two centuries, thanks to a legacy of passion, dedication, and hard work from the Goodrich family. The 2022 Vermont Dairy Farm of the Year. And once again, you can nominate a deserving farm by getting a nomination form from the website on your screen or by calling the toll-free number 1-800-639-2130. And that's our program for today. Once again, thank you for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard, stay well.